in Luke chapter 2, verse 41 through 43, it says, Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Right? So the Passover feast was like a special festival that they had in the city of Jerusalem. And if you remember, Jesus and his family didn't live in Jerusalem, so they had to travel far away away to this special festival, right, that a lot of people went to. Um, and so when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast as usual. After the feast was over, his parents left to go back home. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were not aware of it, right? So, like I said, in Jesus' day, back then, long ago, there were big festivals that they would have in Jerusalem, right? And there were three major holidays that they would have. And so one of them was Passover. Oh. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over the city. But if you recall, does anybody know the story of Moses and the twelve plagues? Yeah. Um, and the last one, they put the, the lamb's blood on the door and the angel of death, etc. They're celebrating that, that Jesus saved them, right? And so that's what they celebrate each year. And so everybody comes up to Jerusalem. It's kind of called a pilgrimage, right? Where it's not just like a family vacation, right? Like you go, and then your grandma, and your granddad, and your cousins, and your neighbors, and you all go together in these huge caravans of people that would stretch forever, right? And so they go to do that, and they're like, whoa, yeah, Passover! And then they go to go home, and they're like, Mary, you seen Jesus? No. Joseph, you seen Jesus? No, I thought you had him. I thought you had him. And they're like wigging out all of a sudden. They're like, Uncle Bob, have you seen Jesus? And Aunt May, have you seen Jesus? Right? They're running around. These are huge crowds of people, right? Think thousands of people going home. Have any of y'all been to like a sports game? Yeah. Like a big sports game in a huge arena, right? And if you leave that sports game, and everyone else is trying to leave, so there's cars everywhere, and people walking everywhere. It's kind of similar. Just think about that, right? So it's easy to lose someone. And if you have family, like maybe he's with Grandma Jane or whatever, and so you just kind of assume. So it's not really Mary and Joseph's fault. Like It's not like they're bad parents. They just lost track of time. Well, yeah, they forgot Jesus. So they're like, oh my gosh, we got to go back. So imagine, like, they don't have cars. They're not, like, five minutes down the road. Right they walk, and they probably walk for a good little bit. And they're like, oh, it's so probably running over to Jerusalem. You know, they get there all sweaty. And so... It says in uh, chapter 2, verse 44 and 45, they thought he was somewhere in their group. So they traveled on for a day, a whole day of walking. I didn't have to walk that back. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. They did not find him, so they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Right? Mm. After three days, they found him in the temple courtyard. He was sitting with the teachers. He was listening to them and asking them questions. That's pretty weird, right? Like, this kid is not playing with some people, some friends he made. He's not scared, like, crying in the corner, like, Mommy! Like, I would be, like, I'm like, oh, my mom! But he's not. He's in the temple, right? And he's talking with his teacher, right? Now, the thing about these teachers in the temple is they weren't just, like, they weren't just, like, normal teachers. They knew a lot. Like, I'm talking, they would have the Old Testament memorized. You could be like, oh, what's in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 3, and they'd be like, blah, 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 and they'd be able to tell you, right? Like, they had whole books of the Bible memorized. That's how smart they were. And Jesus, a 12-year-old, remember, older than most of you guys in this room, but just by a year, right? He was asking them questions, and they were like, whoa, right? And here's the thing. There's also asking the question. How many of y'all feel like you're kind of like, well, you can't ask a question? Like, you just feel like, mm, I, I can't ask a question. I might look dumb. I might, they might think I'm dumb, or they might think I don't know anything, right? But what was Jesus doing? Here's a 12-year-old kid asking teachers questions. She's like, well, what about this, and what about this? Right? Asking questions isn't a sign that you don't know. In fact, it can be a sign that you do know and you care and you're invested, right? So if you're with your small group leaders, ask questions, guys. We want to answer them. If you don't know what's going on, 
it's not that you don't know. In fact, it shows us that you care even more, right? So questions can answer, and not only do they show that you care, but they help you learn more, right? So don't be afraid to ask questions. Here in uh, Luke 2, 47, it says, Everyone who heard him was amazed at how much he understood. They were also amazed at his answer, right? So not only was Jesus asking questions, but he was responding and he was talking, and they were pretty amazed at what this 12-year-old knew and understood. So we're talking about knowledge, right? Talking about does Jesus really understand? Does God know everything? All of that, and it says right here that he knew a ton, just twelve, right? If you remember, Jesus wasn't—he wasn't any different than you guys. He was fully human, as the Bible says. He was fully human. He was just like you. He had flesh. He had a brain. He had brain parts, and he. You know, would stumble over his words maybe at some point, or things like that. He stubbed his toe, right? He got sick, right? He experienced the things we experienced, so it's not like he's special, but he understood God's work because he asked questions and he sought after the knowledge of God, right? So right here in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says, Jesus became wiser and stronger he also became more and more pleasing to God and to people. <coughs> Sorry, but for Jesus, right? Knowing, just knowing God wasn't enough. He didn't want to just know God. He didn't just want to, you know, be able to quote John 3.16 for that little girl that gave Billy sign. No. He wanted to know God deeply, right? So he spent time in God's word, right? Just because he was God's son, it didn't exclude him from reading the word, right? We believe that Jesus knew a ton about the Old Testament. If you read through, he's actually talking about it all the time. In a lot of his lessons, he'll reference verses from the Old Testament. Um, so Jesus knew and he cared deeply about the word of God, right? He spent time, it says, he literally left his parents. He let his parents go home. So that he could learn from the teachers, right? So he could learn and ask questions and grow. So this wasn't just a pastime for Jesus. This wasn't just, you know, uh, I guess I'll read a few verses tonight before I go to bed because that's what we're supposed to do. A lot of us do that. I'm guilty of that. But this was real for Jesus, right? This meant a lot to Jesus. He really, really cared about understanding and growing in God, right? So, just think about it. Think about um, maybe Corey or maybe our team pastor Shannon or anybody else that comes up and speaks. We, we know a good bit about the Bible, right? Corey can tell you a lot about the Bible. Shannon can tell you a lot about the Bible. But do you think that they know everything? No, probably not, right? I can't come up here and tell you the meaning of life or all of these hard questions, right? I can't answer those, but there's somebody who can, right? There's somebody that created the whole universe and holds it together in his hand, like right now, we're only here because God chose to keep us here. So we know that he knows everything, and he gave us a book right here with all of the stuff that we need, right? So if we want to know everything, and not in a little, okay, we can't die. Here, Jesus, let me know everything. <laughs> you ate your math exam, right? It's not going to quite work like that. But if we want to know and understand everything, we need to look at this <coughs> book, right? This isn't just a book. This isn't just a couple of different writings that are really old and boring. And, you know, you go through and you flip it, and you're like, Who's that guy? I don't even know how to say his name. What? It's not just a weird history book. It's important, guys. So, maybe we need to start reading. I, I probably started about your age, guys. Just a little bit of the Bible a day. Right? And it does a lot, right? 
Because God knows everything. And this is God's work. So if we want to learn and grow in our knowledge, right, we have to spend time in it. We can't just come on a Sunday morning and learn everything, right? So just like the piano, right, guys? You have to spend time, right, in practice. The same applies for God's work, right? You have to read it. You have to ask questions, guys. All of us ask questions. Corey asks questions. I probably ask more questions than anyone because I don't know, right? Tucker, Shannon, all of those people ask questions. Not because they don't know, like we said, but because they want to learn more. And I want you guys to do that too. So, before we go, I want to challenge you guys. You've got a life group coming up, right? Or maybe next week. Or maybe over the week. If you have a question, right? Something about the Bible. Something that's going on in your life. I want you to ask it today. And if you don't have a question today, that's fine. But if you think of one, write it down. And come Wednesday or come next Sunday and ask that question. Because... I want you guys to grow, right? And I'm sure you want to grow, right? Like, no one wants to just, like, stay the same for the rest of their life like this and just be a little way before, right? No one wants to do that. Right? Right. Right! So ask questions, guys. I challenge you. You are awesome. You guys are so smart, and you know a whole lot. So ask some questions so you can learn, guys. I want to see that. So, I'm just going to leave you with this. This is God's work. Do y'all believe that? The answer is yes, this is God's work, right? It's got a ton of knowledge. So don't just let it sit by your nightstand. If you don't have one of these, ask for it or one of us. We will get you a Bible at Plum. We want you to have one. So get one. Start reading it. Read a little bit. Ask your mom or dad or somebody here to help you read through it. We'd love to do that. But don't let the knowledge and understanding of God pass you by. So, we're going to go to worship. Uh, the question I want to ask for you is, how do you know God? What do you do? You can pray, you can read your Bible. You know, one of my favorite things is seeing God in nature, right? I know that there is a God, and I know God because of some amazing things I've seen, some amazing sunsets, some amazing views from a mountaintop, right? So how do you know God? What do you do to get to know him more? So I'm going to pray, and then I think we're going to go to worship. Um, God, thank you that you love us enough to give us knowledge and understanding. Um, you gave us a word um, so that we can know you more, Lord. Let us not waste it. But Lord, let us seek after you. Lord, help us all. School is starting. Um, help us to uh, just have a great first week of school um, and to put you first in our lives. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.